Whenever you're ready, sir. All right. Well, good morning, everybody. This is the fourth time I've been here, so I feel like you're all a family. Family. Uh, so I'm going to talk a little bit about sophomore year experience program. It started under the previous director of housing as a way to engage our sophomore students um, in critical thinking skills, uh, to tie it into campus housing as well. And so we've, been, we've continued this program now for a while. So our educational overview, the objective behind the creation was, as I kind of I mentioned, it's, it's about increasing students' global awareness, enhancing critical thinking skills, utilizing new skills and experiences in academic and personal life, and encouraging persistence, retention, and graduation. And so when we open the process, current first year students apply for their sophomore year. Part of the requirement is you must live on campus that sophomore year in order to participate. Uh, so what is it? It's a non-traditional learning experience. It covers a full academic year. We typically do two to three groups of 12 to 15 students each, exploring a global topic with full-time faculty, staff, advisors, culminating in a seven to 10 day international travel experience related to that topic. So our connection to the mission really is uh, through providing non-traditional learning opportunities through existing and new programs. This is one that now would probably be classified as existing program, but it is non-traditional. It is not credit-based, and it is a full academic year as opposed to being just a summer trip. Um, and it does fit within the guiding principle of globalization, how we work on topics such as what is higher ed, how the comparison of higher ed for students here versus, say, in Europe. And I know we've had a couple of different trips explore that topic before. So, I like that this one, fiduciary duty. Uh, Will, this one's for you. <laughs> I remember last time. So here's the deal, this is kind of sort of my, my, my play in here in a way, is I did put in a request in for 55,000. And so that was a little earlier on in the year, well not all that much long ago, but still a good couple of uh, months ago, where we asked for 55, looking at, again, supporting two to three groups. As we've gone in the last month or so, our second group who is going has backed out. Um, everybody has stopped. But one, we got hit with a lot of DACA students who were participating who decided I'm not, I'm not going to participate. It dropped down to three people in that group, and then they decided it, it wasn't worth doing. So I have some money left over from that. Uh, right now in my line, uh, I have 81,000 in my SYE line. So part of that is because I've got a group still going, I've got money coming in, but also about two years ago, apparently we paid for SYE out of a different line instead of the SYE line. So I've actually had a, really a year's worth of SYE money in there. So what I would be asking at this point would be really is, don't fund me and I'll finish out and use the rest of the SYE money I currently have for next year. Or fund me and take the rest of that money either way. So, so I mean, it goes either way. Do you have a preference? Uh, no, just not funding. Okay. Yeah. Because then I can finish it out. Again, we're at 81. I, you know, we have additional costs that will come in with this. We should be down to probably about, I would say, 70 by that point, and then we would be fine for next year. But I did break out the budget a little bit further just to show you kind of how things work. It is in terms of I just did number of participants on the side. Um, Cost of travel gets to be fairly expensive, but, but that includes airline flights, that is, transportation within country, whether rail or bus, et cetera. So we rounded that to 2,000 uh, per person, which is where you see that. Students do pay in to participate in the program of $300 each semester, so I just, 600 bucks per 10, gives you that, and then the total's out to the side. And then fundraising makes up the rest of the money. So I don't have a number in there, it all depends on partly the location, where are they going, what are they looking to do. Oh, one minute, I thought you were pointing. So, I mean, again, 25,000 roughly per group is how we kind of look at it, so that's between 12, 13 folks. And then reductions, if we needed to do it, would, we would really do fewer groups, we would look at fewer participants, and if really, we would have to just continue the program. So. There you go. Professionally, I hope that does not happen. Yeah, we should do it. What's the response from the students that go? What kind of things do they say? A lot of the students who do go have really enjoy the experience. One, of course, traveling. Yeah. Many of them have never been outside the country, and a lot of them still haven't traveled outside of Texas. So what I always hear every year, especially from the advisors, is always at least one student who's extremely nervous on the flight going out. 
because they have, they've never flown that far. Or they've never been on a plane. Yeah, or they've exactly. never been on a plane. Uh, a number of students really, they do, they do enjoy the experience. It's an opportunity to connect with students that don't go further, but then to experience a new culture. We find that a lot of our students, when they come back from this, they also apply for leadership without limits through me, or they find other ways to get involved. One of the things I didn't put in here, but I think I put it in the one pager is, we, have, we need to do a, a different survey at the end to really look at um, some of those experiences further, as well as how we're really connecting, this, how this program is really impacting retention. So we've never done a, this is all our population, and how long did they stay? Did they graduate? Now, participating in this doesn't necessarily mean that they would graduate, but it would be part of the data to look at, or what else did they get involved with? So, and yes, sir. Just to, to speak towards being able to travel a lot. Uh, I personally come from a single parent home that makes up 16,000 on a good year. And so the, the idea of traveling abroad has always been a wish for my uh, high school. And so I, didn't, I personally didn't participate in SIE. I did a different program. Um, but being able to go to foreign nations to see that the culture, that the people that live in those countries aren't really different from us. They have unique preferences sure. and practices. But they are humans like us. Allows for the individual to gain an appreciation on the the uniqueness of human life and also the value of human life, and the difference is being able to contrast them and compare them to see what improvements they could bring back to campus or and develop a an understanding globalization of the world that they will take on into their life. Their life. So sure. personally, I was able to, to get a, a thesis idea from my childhood project experience. Um, and so I can't see with for everyone, but there's a wide variety of support for this because of what the benefits of understanding are. True. And one thing that's different this this current year than in the past, in the past we've really allowed um, the faculty and the students to look at well, where do they want to go and, and, and what we tended to see was everybody just kept going to Europe. And so starting this year we've got designated geographic areas that so this year was uh, Central America and the Caribbean and North America. And next year, that is to be determined, but that really kind of guides both the faculty staff who apply to lead um, a trip and develop a lesson plan and everything, as well as potentially the students who would put that information out as this is where we're going. But our goal is to hit all, all regions of the world within the five to six years. Will? Um, I guess as a, as a follow-up point to that, I knew, for example, in the Department of Political Science, our international relations professor has connections with universities and um, Morocco, Saudi Arabia, I believe maybe one university in Qatar, so certainly on parts of the Maghreb and Middle East, but then I'm sure we have other faculty members with connections elsewhere. Um, what's the, I guess, emphasis on cheaper countries? Because certainly you could look at Central America, but going to somewhere like, you know, Honduras compared to Costa Rica, or going to somewhere, you know, in Northern Africa versus, um, even some nicer countries, you know, in Eastern Europe, per se. You know, when we talk about fiduciary responsibility, breaking off from Western and Eastern Europe, but not going to another playground country in another part of the world, if sure. you will. Yeah, you know, I think there's a, there's, a, there's a challenge in there, potentially, for me, is if we think about the cost of the country and also safety. Mm -hmm. Sure. So the cost to go to a country may be really inexpensive, but the concerns about safety may be higher. And that's unfortunately something we have to watch throughout the year is what's going on anyway. Um, but you do a good deal to Afghanistan right now. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, you do bring up a good point. I mean, there, there is that piece of the budget, though. So I work with the advisor say, this is your ballpark. This is what it should, one, this is what our SSF is. Here's what our student, how many students you have in your group. Here's what this is. You, you need to, your fundraising goal is whatever it's going, whatever is going to be different. Because if you don't make it, you don't go, or you have to find another location. So we have those conversations earlier on to say, what is it going to be? So if we say Southeast Asia is where we want to go next, we may, in the investigation of it, find that financially, I, I don't know if we're able to do that based on where gas prices are and airline tickets, et cetera. You know, so, we do want to keep that in mind, and that's why in terms of the regions, is we're not looking super small. 
we want it to be broad enough that folks can make some choices. Because we couldn't really, nobody put in to go to Canada in this year. But Canada would have been fairly inexpensive for us and it would have been a very big, a very uh, far flight. But as we get further away from the US, sometimes those flights should not be changed. But it also depends on the faculty or staff and their connections that they have, whether or not they know other people and some of those costs can go down. So just to clarify, when you say every region of the world, do you mean Antarctica as well? Uh, you know what? That is not, thank you. It is not on my list specifically. I'm a former student right now in Antarctica. So. However, I would say I think you can make you, you can make an advocation for it. So, but it, it it would be very specific. But we evaluate the overall uh, the well, we evaluate the faculty staff groups. They submit their their report like. We put out the call, they say, here's the topic I'd like, we'd like to do, here's a rough outline, here's locations we're thinking about, and then we do a review of those and say, and really rank them, because we're looking at things like past experience traveling, the, the topic itself, like how does this really fit? It, it's cool not, topic. it could be, yes, yeah, and it would be yeah. a cool topic. <laughs> okay. Well, you mentioned fundraising earlier, and I think we've all seen throughout the years us YE groups, amongst others, doing fundraising. But don't consider partnering with some of the other groups who also do fundraising for their trips, like Leadership Without Limits, to either um, bring on a fundraising consultant to campus, um, either on retainer throughout the year, or to just come do a seminar to students, because it seems like student fundraising, some years is really good, right. and some years it really sucks. Yeah. You know, you can only do so many dinners at CC's before you realize we're just not making that much yeah. bank. Yeah. Yeah. No, we have not had that conversation. I think we would probably have some competing uh, commitments within that for groups that have consistently done certain fundraising. We did talk this last year with both of our uh, SYE groups about doing one banquet, not two banquets. Right. So that it, it, it does do kind of what you're talking about and allows us to spend less on the, the food cost to do the banquet. Sure. And granted, we may not make as much money, but we can, we can spread it out. That has been part of the challenge of, you know, I, I, everybody is trying to fundraise, and fundraising is really difficult on campus. You know, or in commerce. Or in commerce, right. or with Everybody faculty and staff who always get asked, right. and departments who always get asked. I think that's a great idea, Will. I really yeah. do. And I'll give you an example of how that might have worked this past year. Leadership Without Limits had the opportunity to have a booth at the Cotton Bowl. Mm -hmm. And it was extremely lucrative. It was the Texas OU game. They got the booth for two days. They could have literally made four figures and up. The problem is they didn't have enough people. If they had been partnering with these other groups that were doing it, they could have done it collectively. It would have alleviated the impact of having to commit to 32 hours, and they could have made a lot of money. So I think that's a great idea. Yeah. And that's Danielle and I can talk about that further. We do a common application because our, our requirements are the same, sure. except for classification. So can I just clarify? So we're essentially at saying you would be good if we just didn't fund you at all. Correct, and, and as long as the university doesn't sweep in and take anything in that SYU line. Otherwise, I'm not agree. They can't. Okay, well, all right, or you all come back in. I won't let it. Yeah, yeah I, don't, I don't believe I need anything for this next year. Any other questions for Michael at SYE? Thank you very much, sir.